Let's rock and roll, boys. Hello and welcome to another Nintendo podcast. I am Austin Cummings and I'm joined by my friends, Matt Schultz and Danny Tortelli. And we have a whole bunch of fun things to uh, talk about today. But if you are listening to the audio podcast, please consider checking us out on YouTube where you can find a fun little Animal Crossing studio that Matt has set up and we've joined him virtually for. But uh, Matt, tell us a little bit about uh, what we're talking about today. Uh, we're going to start out with some uh, Star Wars uh, discussion. So there is a bunch of announcements today. Uh, Austin, why don't you just take us through? Oh, okay. Well, as we know, COVID-19, bit of a bummer, but we have a lot of good Star Wars news. It kind of came out of all different corners of the galaxy there wasn't really like a ton a ton of news but i feel like each little piece of news was um an individual delight to discover like because there was not of course there's no full-scale star wars celebration so each thing was just like a little nugget and i felt like throughout the day i was continuing to find these little nuggets as i went if i were more clever i'd come up with an obvious star wars analogy like i was chasing credits around canto blight and then shoving them down like like that one Mark Hamill alien does to BB-8. But, um, but uh, yeah, so, you know, the biggest one being the final episode of Clone Wars on Disney+, Plus, which is a lot of fun. We won't talk about it here so people have a chance to listen to it. The ones that are less spoilery, though. Um, okay, biggest one. I'm super excited for the next LEGO Star Wars game, which is the full Skywalker saga of nine games. Yeah, so I love the LEGO games. Danny, do you have any experience so, with the LEGO Star Wars? So good. The original six, I had that complete edition before we knew we yeah, could Yeah, complete sequel. saga. <laughs> yeah, nice try. <laughs> Back in my day, right. six Star Wars films was enough. I remember after Halo, it was the very next game I bought for the Xbox 360. Honestly, it was the exact same thing for me for the original Xbox. Like, I, I got the original Xbox. All my buddies got Halo 2. We all got it online. I was like, this is awesome. And then I was like, I have nothing else to play on this thing. So I had, like, just Halo 2 and the first Lego Star Wars. And that was all you need. Seriously. Um, but I'm excited for this because it it is a you know reimagining of their interpretation of those mm-hmm. games. It's not like a complete saga, like repackaging. It's a totally new thing. And um, they Kotaku had a very fun article that's going that Yaddle is going to be a playable character, and I'm really just excited because <laughs> I assume this will kind of delve into Yoda and Yaddle. Um, you know when they become Parents. intimate yep. to right exactly. And as any Star Wars fan knows, they eventually give birth to BB-8. <laughs> <laughs> and um so anyway that was fun really cool in disney plus they have like they have concept art have you seen this art except except i was looking at it today so all the all the cover art for each you know when you hover over each film is all this great uh concept art from each film oh. except for the one that came out today for the first time which was rise of skywalker no 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 it is it is concept art it's ray are you serious? Because I went on yeah. it today, and no, it's it's showing um, it's showing. Now, sometimes art can be so good that it looks uh, photo real. Actually, it was showing BB-8 and um, the little duck droid. What was his name? Okay, Dio. his name is Dio. 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 As we've talked about in the pod before, I love a good art book. Here we have Rise of Skywalker, which we can all agree is a heinously bad film, but this art book is a lot of fun. I'm yet to open it, but I love the cover, and um, but the art is so fantastic for these things. Totally fun to see it there. I would love on Disney Plus if they just did even a slideshow. You know, Disney Plus, little star for content, and it would be great just to have something going through some of the um, Macquarie artwork oh, that gosh. Uh, deca- uh, decorates the original Beautiful films, stuff. and maybe maybe some of the the newer stuff, and just talk about mm-hmm. it. Did, and did any of you watch the? director uh take on the mandalorian that is which is a 30 minute spot right up as soon as i finished Clone i watched Wars, i am watching that how is it okay i i watched it today it's totally cute you know it's um i would it's definitely not assen- essential which is to say it is inessential but the oh <laughs> uh, i don't know if either of you watched for back when they released i, I want to say it was Endgame uh on home video the there was a very similar thing which is a bunch of directors at a round table talking about their experience with their responsibility in the mcu and a lot of it is like you know you have the usual suspects which is john favreau and you have taika uh who was announced that he's going to get his to co-write and direct his own star wars film which is totally exciting i still would love it if they'd 
uh, if they bring back Ryan Johnson for God, his movies, yes, but we know that's touchy. Please. But um, at this point, probably that is not happening, but it doesn't matter. We'll get a new Knives Out film, and that's great too. But, uh, but in any event, it's like very, very similar. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if it's the same room, and it's kind of each of them talking. And I'll say the, the best thing is Dave Filoni in that, who I think uh, Bryce Dallas Howard describes him as being like, me, that his love for Star Wars is very, I, I, something along the lines of pure. Undying. And it's, it definitely comes, comes across, like everything is with a lot of, you know, uh, high reverence for, for George Lucas, you know, George this, George that, but it's, it is really fun. And you can see why he would be like a great shepherd for this. And also it seems like, oh, this is a nice, like he even talks very briefly about like kind of getting teased and it's meant like in a fun way, but you can kind of imagine without being, you know, uh, I think without taking too many liberties that people, you know, getting picked on, especially uh, who have interest in these sci-fi things, especially years ago. And um, it's so nice to see him up there with these superstars um, in directing. And I was actually, the one last thing I'll say, I was surprised by, there's a lot of shots with all like uh, six or seven of the directors like together on the sets. And I was surprised, you know, most of the time these for TV shows, it's a lot of times directors do a one-off or, or so, but it, uh, even though everyone had specific directing responsibilities, clearly they were all on set at least a few mm-hmm. times um, together, which was pretty neat to see. And Dave Filoni being up there was just like, cool. It's cool for the, you know, the Star Wars fan and all of us. Yeah. And so um, it's, I think it, for me, the most excited thing was just, I was, I made a list of, thing, of things to do today, like for this, period of time we're in like things i want to kind of get done accomplish things i want to read games i want to go back and make sure i've like completed nice. you know etc and one of the things was like i want to watch the clone wars all the way through and now that i think it's officially done and the hype is here especially today i think i got extra excited about that just hearing some of the i think the very positive feedback about the finale um, yeah and it's tie-in with you know um the final film of the prequels so I still really recommend with that mm-hmm. looking at the list that Disney put out before this series started for the season and there's 20 essential episodes. So I would really recommend that. Because, especially yeah. for the first two seasons. Yeah, you, first two or three. It's, those uh, have been my, that's been my hardest part is getting through those first two seasons. I'm just so like, truly cherry pick those first two. Really? Yeah, I, I would just yeah. do the 20 episodes. And in fact, I've watched the previous seasons. I went back and rewatched this 20 before this. And I definitely enjoyed Clone Wars. I'm not, a, I have highs and lows with it. I think I come off overall as liking it, but it's not, um, you know, it's for a specific breed of Star Wars fan, I think, largely. And, and, and younger hey, what's, audiences. What's that, Austin? What is <laughs> cool, that breed? Cool people like, <laughs> like Danny and me. But, um, uh, but it's a show that really evolved visually through hugely as it oh, went and the final season looks awesome everything. and and action and they yeah they have a better sense of what they can and can't do as it goes on because i i really um not worth getting hugely into but i think that for anyone listening matt yourself included i would just watch the 20 those 20 episodes and then enjoy the new season i if, if and if you love those 20 episodes i would still do the 20 episodes do the new season and if you're like yeah i loved it go back and watch the originals because it's it's fun to see where it came from and none of them are heinously bad it's just uh it's a lot of episodes and some are just you know kind of fun saturday morning style episodes that you can take and leave and probably skew for a slightly younger audience and yeah. don't always feel uh, yeah. as essential so that's how i would do it but you i would watch all rebels watch, he shouldn't watch the jar jar arcs i like the gungan general <laughs> episodes i actually think are pretty fun and i think really okay one less than clone wars i have three i have three pillars for clone wars that i've developed this pretty hard over the past few weeks for what makes a successful clone wars episode are you ready okay one is it has to tie into the greater universe of star wars in a in a meaningful way so that means when i'm thinking about that i'm thinking okay let's show some of anakin's maybe moments of anger his turn to the dark side let's see obi-wan maybe with conflict about um you know the passionless jedi council and things like that like those types of things also like hey can we see some seating for like um, the clones for Rex, which we know comes back in, in Rebels or 66, like those, uh, Darth Maul's appearance and Solo, spoilers, those things I think are really important. And this is yes. an opportunity to flesh those out. So that's number, yes. number one. Number two is character development by a major Clone Wars character, which does not always happen with like Anakin and Obi-Wan because I, I know there was a feeling of like, 
oh, that we see them at the start of episode three, so they can't change that much. I always mm-hmm. wish they'd take more risks with them, but most of the time they leave those arcs for Ahsoka, Tano, and Rex and the other clones. So I would love to revisit this in another episode. That <laughs> very last and sentence you said. My last, my last thing is uh, just to show the scale of the wars. And yes. I think that's the, the yes. third thing. That, and if an episode can deliver on two of the three, I think it's a success. And for yes. the most part, this final season does a good job. Except for the first few episodes were, were boring. I wasn't so into the bad bunch. They were fine. <laughs> for my first okay. two seasons of watching it, I think the thing that was attractive was seeing the scale of the war. I think, mm-hmm. you know, yes. hopping for but it was so like random at like one you know at the story beats of like they just start off and like here's this military conflict happening in this system or this whatever right. um and so it was a little hard to follow but it was cool just to see how expansive it was and how many like you know neutral groups there were and mm-hmm. just all all that was great but then um i i would say like the character development i i felt like I'm like, well, I don't know. I, I feel like it, was- it didn't really know there's- what to do with the core characters because I think it felt yeah. like they, you know, especially back to Dave Filoni and George Lucas, I don't think he wanted to step on those characters too much. And I remember I used to watch all the director commentaries that came with them when they released to Blu ray. And I remember they talk about, like, oh, okay, when episode three, when when Anakin meets Grievous, that's the first time they encounter each other. And there's some quips about, you know, now you'd be taller, you know, because Star Wars is poetry and it rhymes. And yeah. the, um, but because of that, they can't ever meet during the Clone Wars. So there's like a lot of like Anakin running into room and Grievous, like running out of it kind of thing. And right. I think as the show went on, they got away from the limitation and started focusing on some of the original characters, whether they were the characters from Mandalore or Ahsoka and characters that they had more creative liberties that they were comfortable with. Because it is a bummer to me. Ventress. Like, yeah. f- Ventress, exactly. I feel like, and certainly Maul, um, I felt like they, oh, no, Anakin Maul. and Obi-Wan were pre- are pretty stagnant for most of it. And I always wanted them, like, show me Anakin angry. Like, the biggest issue with the originals, I know, it's a lot. The biggest issue that Vader is, like, you never believe Vader and Anakin are the same person, right? Like, it's you don't believe Hayden Christensen's, like, in that armor. Not because of Hayden Christensen, but just they to feel like different people. Right. And, so it's like, oh, Clone Wars is the opportunity to really show him like being impulsive or acting on emotions and being violent and like the same person who would take out all the younglings, you know, moment, you know, whatever, months later. And um, it doesn't do that. And so I think they felt more comfortable using great characters they developed. Like Jabba the Hutt's baby. <laughs> it's a baby hut, it's not Jabba's. Yeah, hey, uh, Danny. Danny. There was also news of um, uh, Star Wars. Uh, uh, was it uh, Fall, uh, Jedi Fallen Order uh, getting some DLC? Yeah. Not for for all of our Nintendo fans. I'm sorry, mm-hmm. it is not on the Switch. <laughs> right. I just want to reiterate, it's on all, all the other consoles. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Switch. Um, talk to EA. So they're getting some. It's mostly just visual updates along with a battle arena update. Yeah, there's some cool so, cosmetics. Right. So yeah, you can you can essentially wear all the bad guy outfit now in story mode, which is cool. I've seen some of the art, like some of the images. It's sick. Yeah. It's really um, cool. You can get a red lightsaber finally, and then that's all for the story mode uh, free play. But then there's a non-story mode arena play that you can customize to fight whoever and however many people yeah um, the combat's so good in that game that's really you know sorry it's, it's it's cool danny will it will you go back to the game because of that dlc or are you pretty much done probably not i i went back a little bit after the new year after i beat the whole game um and i realized i hadn't 100 percent of it and i've gotten probably like 85 90 percent of the game as far as like unlocking everything seeing everything and it's i i truly do love it but it's one of those things where like it just became a time suck, um, especially when new stuff started coming out. Um, so I truly adore that game to no end. I, if they haven't already officially greenlit the sequel, they need to yesterday. Um, but I, you know, I got as far as I could before I was like, you know, had they done this DLC midway through the game for me, I would have been like, sorry guys, I can't pod tonight and go play this. Um, but now that I've already beaten it, it's like, Cool to see the artwork already. I can see the still images online. You're so. in it for the next story. Yeah. 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 Well, 
Matt, did you get a chance to play Fall in Order, though? Did you ever play more of it? Yeah, so so that's on my list of uh, <laughs> things yeah. to do during this time uh, is, beat, is beat Fall in Order. I think I... I loved it. I definitely loved that. I 100% that that one. But yeah, you you've strong you rap out of that. So did Danny. Um, and I, I have it on the Xbox, so I'm I'm excited to kind of get back to it. But yeah, so it's, good. I guess, it's like Luigi's Mansion. So uh, that was one thing I wanted to quickly ask you, any of you, because because I know Austin, you kind of inspired me with this. You are oh, going through a huge backlog of games, and I. Um, so much I've got a fair share of Nintendo games of my own that I definitely need to get to. So. Um, Austin, what have you beaten recently that uh, maybe Nintendo wise uh, that you're spending time on on your Switch right yeah, now? That's a good question. Let's, let's look at our play log. I've definitely taken this opportunity to finish a lot of games, and that's been really fun for me because it's rare that I've finished the, as many games as I wish that I did. And so when the quarantine kind of set in, I did take it as a good opportunity. And so of those games, finally like finished. Fire Emblem Three Houses. I finished uh, Super Mario Maker 2's 100 plus levels. Uh, Blood Roots, uh, Katamari Damacy, The Tourist. Let's see, what else did I finish? I finished Streets, Streets of Rage 1 through 3 uh, this weekend. Uh, so those are some of them. And there definitely are, like, I never finished Link's Awakening, the remake. So I'd still like to finish that. So that's out there still. Yoshi's Crafted World. Um, is really not very good, but I need, really do want to finish it. Um, it's really beautiful, but I, I think it's not good. Um, I would like to finish Luigi's Mansion. So those are like kind of the big outlying Nintendo games. A lot of these have been things a little smaller where I'm like, ah, oh, I can finish it. I'm, I'm close. And um, I, like I have been very much enjoying Final Fantasy VII Remake, which I uh, just wrapped up, and Resident Evil 3. Um, so there's some things on other consoles as well. but. Uh, really wanting to do maternal finish that it, it's been good it's been a good time for me to crank through some of these games i've been very fortunate in that way and uh we've been making serious progress dan do you have anything on your backlog that you try you want to get back to i mean right now it's a lot i mean i know you're playing a lot of animal crossing um but is there anything on your switch that you want to start playing or haven't beaten yet let's see i bought inner space there was a sale just when the quarantine was starting, I bought it. I, I played about 10, 15 minutes of it. Looks beautiful. Love the soundtrack, the acoustics, whatever. Gameplay is a little wonky. Uh, controls are a little wonky, but I, I do want to dive back into that a little bit. Um, I still haven't beaten Starlink, so I might hop into <laughs> I that. I never finished that. <laughs> that's, a great, I, I, that's a great I, time, too. Eventually yeah. let that one go, but I, um, I liked it for sure. Although it was much better playing with a co-pilot, Austin. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. <laughs> you mean tricky? Yes, I know. We all <laughs> tricky. And back to it safely. <laughs> um, that that's a franchise I'd love to see come back with like better like online co-op like that. I mean, any online. I'm thinking it won't. It won't. <laughs> uh, but maybe you know they'll give them Star Fox. I'm thinking, please, yeah, please I'm get rid of their Another own time. movie soft characters. Much. Just, Just too much. Star Fox. Fox. So um, I'm I've uh, I have not beaten the final. Um, um area of celeste so i want to get back to that i nice. uh, still need to be at luigi's mansion which mm-hmm. is uh, i just want to jump back into that game so bad it's just literally like just take a step away from animal crossing which is yeah. not what i'm doing right now and then finally okay. um uh fire Emblem three houses is the yeah. game i really want to pour some time into but in oh, other- so uh, really just quickly touch on i did start the dlc for that the cinder shadows and i really like that like the it's super hard um and the thing i like about it is that it's just it's boots up out of its own menu it's its own mini campaign you unlock those characters for the main game if you beat the side campaign um and i uh really yeah i like that take a lot because i wanted to play the game again but i didn't really know if i want to put in all the time for all the houses and the monastery stuff which didn't <laughs> Which could, probably clicked with me eighty percent during the game, and um, but in Cinder Shadows, it's its own little sub area that's very tight, and um, so it's a new area underneath Garrick Mark, but the area is small, and um, you can it nicely condenses down what I found a little bit laborious about the in the core game. I also quick shout out for one final game is the Marvel Ultimate Alliance three. Uh, I know we talked about it way back on the show definitely like a repetitive game but i i sat down and finished it 
And also, okay. the, it has like really cool Fantastic Four DLC, which we saw on the more recent Nintendo Directs. Finish that too. And but I wanted to say about it is really nicely done. Like as far as uh, I believe Team Ninja and the rest of the development team, because it's um, the cutscenes. Like it's a game that has not gotten a lot of attention. It's certainly repetitive. I would recommend it only lightly if you know Marvel is really your thing. Um, I played most of it co-op, so that helped. But the, uh, but and it, but it's like challenging. <laughs> the combat's pretty cool. Uh, it's it's definitely repetitive. It's a little bit long, but um, as far as it had like awesome, awesome cutscenes that were like these great pre-render cutscenes that include so many fun characters. You know, X Men, Avengers, and then Fantastic Four in the DLC, and um, as well as like these really cool deep cuts. As far as a comic book fan goes, that were just like totally a delight it's a game that you know for 29.99 is well worth like a pickup um you know price is different for everyone but as long as you know you're getting into something that's you know a, a beat 'em up and not maybe super but there's actually a lot of depth for people who are into it there's tons of weird systems certainly too many systems in the game but um i had fun as i was playing looking in online for the youtube community looking at like what are the best builds? What characters have cool synergy attacks to other characters? And, you know, what do I do to grind these up? Because the game is reasonably hard. Um, and mm -hmm. so, uh, uh, just like I say, I came off that game certainly positive. Um, liked it. But in that game we were, was uh, interesting or exciting, I think, because of the, like, co-op, you know, like the like yeah. house co-op. Or could you even do an online, online co-op, which... Can I can't even speak to there. Is, there are online modes. So there's actually like a full like arena. We we're just talking about arena style multiplayer modes. So there's that too. You can like square off against another team. There's like a competitive online, which mm. is crazy. So there's there's definitely that online. But I played a couch co-op for about half of it, and my brain like did melt by the end because again, pretty repetitive and wh whatnot. But also like exciting and fun and fun characters and great locations and cool references and super fun cutscenes. Um that had awesome voice acting and uh so certainly came away impressed well that's awesome because that was a great great game of the summer and it did show up uh in last year's nintendo e3 direct but this year's nintendo <laughs> e3 direct is unfortunately most likely not going to happen in the form uh <laughs> anyway uh we're not entirely sure how any news is going to come but your gamer um you know was reporting that Essentially, what's happening is Nintendo reached out to its um, various uh, publishers or um, folks who are had content, third parties that had content that they were going to okay. show off during the E3. Who basically, and they're basically saying, like, look, we are struggling with our, you know, creating our first party games in a timely manner and getting content to put into um, this direct, let alone like reach certain like dates and deadlines. And Nintendo notoriously, you know, holds things close to the chest until things are ready to show. And so because they weren't ready because of adapting to not working um, in one, you know, in, in one area um, and working yeah. remotely now, they had to reach out. And because of that outreach, you know, uh, that leaked. And um, essentially, for all intents and purposes, there's not going to be a June E3 Direct uh, as far as we know. So I don't know. What are your thoughts on that, guys? Like, I think it's a huge bummer, um, yeah. but it makes total sense. And at the end yeah. of the day, like, there's a lot of great content and, and, and quality out there. And we always have 51 uh, <laughs> board games to play. It's true. It comes out <laughs> June 6th, so I'm ready. Um, but no, there's a lot of Nintendo content out there and a lot of other content to hold people over at the end. It is, it is, it is a video game. Essentially, like, we're all going to miss out on video game commercials. Like, oh, no. <laughs> right. um, but I don't know. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, it, had they had this not been a pandemic, and this had been something like Metroid Prime Four, where they just came out and said, "Yeah, sorry, we're not just not ready for the direct." That's one thing. Given the state of the world, it's like you know what, it is super sad, but uh, of course, it's understandable. Everyone's had to make these adjustments, and they're I'm sure they're doing the best they can. And when they're ready to put something out, they will. And and I do hope that their partners, um, if they do have stuff ready to go. Uh, even if it's just like a one-off little commercial, you know, a little two-minute, here's what Ubisoft's working on, um, here's what Square Enix is working on, yeah, something. Um, that'd be nice. It it does seem odd that they might not still be able to put up something small, you know? I think, I just think, like, uh, overall, this is probably, we're going to see a lot of this going forward. You know, we have this great 
rush of games that were I'm very thankful hit right as quarantine started. You know, Animal Crossing yes. and Doom and Final Fantasy and Resident Evil and um, I think now we're going to start to really start feeling the the challenges for all these companies to work from home and coordinate everything and you know the delays will start to set in so i think mm-hmm. stuff that really wasn't fully made we're gonna start like a direct gonna start seeing more of it slow down i i do it is disappointing only in that i think we all felt like well if anyone can do a digital direct it'll definitely be nintendo so to have it not happen is a little surprising but also knowing nintendo i wouldn't be surprised if you know, May 31st or July 1st, we got some type of direct thing. Um, so, right, exactly. And they're like, oh, the Switch Lite. And you're like, what? Why? Yeah. Where was this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or like Switch Lite video where they're like, you know what a TV is. But what if you walk out of the room and you don't have it anymore? And it's not a normal and, Switch. <laughs> and maybe part of it just feels sad because it feels like a continued death of E3 overall. Um you know, like we just kind of had that hope, like Austin said, like if anybody can do this digitally, it's Nintendo. Xbox said they're going to do it. Or they're going to do something. Um, some of the bigger third party publishers said they'll do something. So, yeah, I think in addition to anything, it just feels sad because it's like the last, you know, there was the last vein of hope uh, was that Nintendo would do something E3 related. Right. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm sure they're going to surprise us at some other time and it's going to be wonderful and we'll be glad that they waited. Yeah. 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 So, uh, like, speaking of games, uh, like Animal Crossing, which are holding us over. Uh, what a segue. Speaking of games. <laughs> what a, speaking of games. Um, uh, yeah, games are fun. No, so uh, Animal Crossing, uh, during this time, has apparently uh, made history by becoming uh, uh, selling the most digital copies in, the, in, in its uh, release month um, at 5 million copies digitally than any uh, other game on any other console. And to kind of put this into perspective, um, one, of, um, one of the articles was stating how that essentially means that this, uh, these sales combined were bigger than the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate and Pokemon Sword and Shield digital sales uh, and during their launch months, which is just insanely huge. Um, and so, uh, Obviously, this game has been extremely popular to the point mm-hmm. where if you were to go to Polygon right now and you were to click on their Nintendo page, uh, eight out of the ten stories uh, are all Animal Crossing related. Just con- mm-hmm. constant. And it's like, a, yep. it's just, you know. Uh, yeah. Speaking of Animal Crossing, further Animal Crossing news, uh, wow. another another glitch was found <laughs> uh, in the game, allowing players to duplicate items. So were you all privy to the first uh, item duplication? Um, no, no. Is this on the record or? <laughs> Are these also no the same time so traveling no. punks? <laughs> but, uh... True. Gosh darn it, you know the one thing we forgot to do in this episode is give Ian a gosh darn shout out. Oh, it was let's travel right before time the episode, right we're now, like, at the and... very start, we need to do this. And we're like, yeah, for sure. And then now we're probably three hours into the podcast. Quick shout out, Ian, 2458. What do we say? appreciate? <laughs> Ian 2458 <laughs> the um anyway of uh, Rose an extremely nice YouTube comment saying that he was surprised not more people had listened and he enjoyed it and that is so great we are thrilled to have him add him to the ranks of King D the Daniel my mother and that one young woman that we said was a bot and never heard from again so thank you it's an esteemed crowd and ian we are thrilled to have you we'd love to have you on the show or whatever you want you let us know you can find us on <laughs> you can find us on on twitter a and p podcast um yeah anyway super fun so thank you for that and matt you were saying about the glitch so there's this new glitch where uh people have discovered and i don't know how you just you happen upon these but essentially if you were to go into the um kind of happy home style of room decorating mode in your house where you press the uh the the, the lower part of the d-pad um it takes you in that top down view if you you have a, a two by two table um and then you take that two by two table and then you you find another two by one table place it then you put an, a a two by one item on said table. For example, a 50 inch uh, TV fits perfectly in, in, in terms of that, you know, mm-hmm. measurement. So you've heard. Well, people are. Then it's like you in that in that open app. You like place the TV 
over what where that bigger table is so that it auto adjusts you do that like two more times then you exit the <laughs> you exit the designer <laughs> app you go upstairs you come back into the room and you have magically two or three more tvs and it's what? bizarre yeah and it's it's they nintendo already addressed the first one they definitely are going to the second one um but people you know people are exploring it's just it's sad because this guy on youtube had like his whole all of his pocket was pockets were filled with 50 inch screen tvs <laughs> which you can then go and sell yeah and his name was crazy red <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, also crazy red that's another story i'm following up <laughs> apparently the animal crossing fandom are shipping crazy red and uh tom nook as ex-lovers who are uh, in an economic quarrel <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, Timmy and Tommy that's do so have a good. little bit of a red uh, tint to their <laughs> that's fur. That's true. That's true. Yes. Little green in your eyes, Mister <laughs> oh, Rogers, or whatever. Red lost Cup City a long time ago. In, yeah, in the early 2000s. So and now, and he's, now he's living on a boat by himself. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> that sounds like a Run lot of bad breakup stories. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's better like this. I, I don't have to pay. I don't pay property tax. Uh, it's, uh, it's like We've international waters. I can do whatever yeah. I want. Um, so, uh, one final thing we'd be remiss not to talk about as a Nintendo show is that there was a massive, uh, massive, uh, I guess, breach or leak or hack of, um, Nintendo's, uh, like Wii, I don't know, like architecture and coding and yeah, some deep code, a, a lot of, and not just Wii, but like, was it 3 d GameCube. Yes. Or GameCube. Yeah. It was like basically the old account system. I don't think it was GameCube, was it? I thought, I thought, I thought it was, it said. Well, that thing barely even got online. You could play like what Fantasy Star Online two, and that maybe that's it. What else could you even play? But hey, if, don't make you know fun what? of fans for right. that. <laughs> right. Ian's like, I'm not listening to them anymore. I love <laughs> Fantasy Star Online on the game too. <laughs> the um, I yeah. Well, in any event, old account system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, um, obviously, it's it's Nintendo's probably going to file a lawsuit. It's a, it was a ton of data, um, and it has yet to be seen what what the internet's going to do with all that information. Uh, but one thing came out was uh, some like background around why Nintendo chose friend codes, which has historically been a point of frustration for Nintendo fans for a long time as gaming has entered the internet age. Um, and they were explaining it in a very Nintendo way as violating the comfortable principle. <laughs> Yes. For Nintendo, which basically was, you know, saying allowing people to choose screen names. Uh, they were worried about uh, basically people like, for example, the uh, example they gave in this article was like, uh, someone whose name was John. Well, John could be easily discoverable by a ton of people who are just randomly putting in usernames and then sending out friend requests. So, God forbid that you one John in the mm-hmm. world who got John as their user- username uh, yeah. would get so many friend requests, and that would be uncomfortable for the user end experience. That is a very Nintendo way of explaining it. Like, I when I saw the story, Matt, my gut response was like, okay, you know, a lot of... So, I've been playing a lot of... Uh, Modern Warfare Warzone. Something that's been fun about that is it's cross-play with other platforms. And so yeah. a lot of my friends who are at home, there's been a lot of us high school friends just online, which has been great. And something you notice is, you know, PC players, they're not locked into the same username situation. They have, you know, they'll their friend system doesn't use like with PSN or Xbox Live where you have to have a unique identifier. You know, their system's a lot more flexible because the linking feature is more of a um, you know, under the hood like linking of of numbers in your account ID. So you can choose kind of whatever name you want. And yeah. I um that definitely speaks to me as like that's you know a lot more desirable than even having a PSN name. I'm always like, oh the one I really want is slightly different than the one I chose. Yep. And you yep. know mm-hmm. um so in some ways Nintendo's thing is freeing. I think the way of sharing friend codes is still too labor intensive. It'd be much, you know, if you can make your own friend identifier or something to share, it'd be a lot easier. Yeah. Or or fewer in any event like the sharing like is kind of the code, issue yeah. yeah or an easy way of like sharing it with people that isn't like my taking a photo of it and sending people that, <laughs> yeah, that much, string yeah. of numbers but um they have added but, some nicer features around like linking it with social media yeah. or connecting with people that you already played with and you yeah, know so, so like we, done, we did there, with but, Gwen but, uh, so when ago. I saw the story I was like oh they just wanted people to be able to choose their own name without the hassle but it, instead it's like a very Nintendo like you know uh doubling over backwards to like provide this safety measure that no one in the digital age would ever like expect is a reasonable thing. So yeah, yeah. that is a fun little story. Yeah. 
So um, that kind of wraps up all of our Nintendo news. I say, yeah. I say, Matt, let's, let's you know, take us home. Okay, I'm going to sing my favorite K.K. Slider song. Uh, it goes... <laughs> <laughs> Actually, please close us out. Um, um, well, I was <laughs> just going to say... Uh, thank you all uh, three for listening to another Nintendo podcast. Um, um, you can find us on YouTube at another Nintendo podcast. You might have to search a little bit, but you'll find us and uh, on Twitter at ANP podcast uh, and find us on SoundCloud or Apple podcast, Google store. Uh, but Especially until if you're listening there right next now, time. because <laughs> sorry. Yeah. I, if you've already found us there, you know, yeah, I don't know write a review. Go, write a review, go to the YouTube channel, uh, mm-hmm. give us a, a like, maybe even subscribe if you want. Um, yeah, we but we know people subscribe. are listening on SoundCloud. So Honestly, put, a, the put a comment on the YouTube because we'll definitely reply. We'll text each other very we'll excitedly being out. like, do you know this person? And then one of us will be like, yes, we do. And like, yes. <laughs> That's another bot anyway. we have to call out in the middle of the show. Okay. <laughs> another bot. We got a bot shame. In any event. Thank you so much for joining us at another Nintendo podcast, either in podcast form or on YouTube.com. Please stay safe out there, and thanks for listening.